I guess the difference with the remote control car, a few. One, if it breaks, you don't really care, right? I mean, you can drive it into a wall, it doesn't really matter. Um, here you are acutely aware of how expensive this is. If we have our very nice hand outside the window, if we hit it, you know, that could damage, right? So that's one big thing. Another thing is that when you do have the remote control cars, I remember as a kid, right, you can see it and you can see what it's doing and you can actually predictively control it, right? So if you see that, it, oh, it skidded a little bit more than I expected, right, you get that perception. Uh, here you don't see all that perception with a, a slower frame rate and you don't hear anything. It's very remote. Maybe you turn just a little bit left over here. You have to send one command, wait back, and, and listen to the signal. In addition, you can't actually have a high frame rate. So even if you do have lag, you can only send one frame every two seconds. So if we get a frame every two seconds, you know, a spectator is going to see the car and they're going to say, oh, it's, it's not moving. What is it? You know, is it broken or something like that? And really, we're just waiting for the uh, picture to come back to us to confirm that, yes, you know, our hands are 10 and 2, the steering wheel is at, you know, noon or 6 or something like that. And it adds up, but the more you work with the robot, you get used to it, and the human will adapt to say, okay, I press this, I mentally know that it'll go, and then you can actually press this space bar a little bit. So uh, being able to understand when you can press buttons helps a lot. So it's a tricky game with latency and uh, bandwidth restrictions.